Alrighty guys, I didn't get footage today and um, I'm gonna have to work on that, but we finished up the paper job. I'll put a picture in here. Um, turned out great, just took a lot longer than expected, but it was finally done. The garbage run, I'm done with. Yesterday was the first day of the new company taking over. Yesterday they had like 70 pickups, maybe a little bit more. They also took over another business, garbage business, which this other business was um, 270, I believe, and then however many they had to start. I was talking to the guy, they started at 4.30 in the morning and then didn't get done until eight at night. Yeah, that's been a little bit hectic. Lisa has been taking care of most of that, um, touching base with the customers. The other thing that I'm working on is the plowing contracts that I traded for, and there's been some hiccups with that. So far, the two best price contracts have pretty much said yes. The other two that are like way underpriced, one of them wants like references and list of equipment, which is understandable, but they are very far underpriced. They're about half of what it should be. It's $10,000 for the contract, but it's gonna require a loader which we found a good deal. The guy that works for us has a loader. He would be renting or leasing it to us for 1,500 a month, but for the season for six months, that'd be $9,000. This contract, so this is the only contract that we need a loader for, and that doesn't count him operating it. So we would lose money on this contract. So we would have to be at least 20,000 for this contract, which I do not think they're gonna accept. The other place, uh, we stopped in today and the guy was not happy. He didn't like the fact that Nick thought he could just trade the contract. And he had already received bids. They're priced at 4000 including sidewalks, which is like very low. And then the third place, the guy, Nick is doing one of his other properties. And the guy didn't want to have to deal with two separate contractors for this property. Nick was going to hold on to the contract and then we were going to... Uh, we were going to do the work and he was going to pay us, which he told my dad that, but didn't tell me. And I'm not comfortable with that. I want to be the one on the contract. You know, the deal was I was going to trade in the garbage route and he was going to, I was going to get $30,000 worth of contracts. And right now we're about 18,000 short. Um, I got to go over that stuff with him. Um, get that sorted out. There was another contract that my dad's going to drop off and hopefully get signed. Um, which would be for 6000 So with that, we'd be looking good. But right now, it seems plowing. Um, I've been listening to a plowing podcast. And in general, there's just... a. It seems like people are just under... They are just underbidding contracts. My dad, the property that the guy didn't want two contractors on, my dad was doing 20 years ago for more than what Nick is doing it now. That's insane with inflation, the inflation that's happened just in the past couple of years, not counting 20 years ago, and they're doing it for less. I think what's happening is these contractors are, <clears throat> they make all their money in the summer and then they need to cover their payroll and their equipment expenses. And there's not much work in the winter. So you have guys that have pressure washing businesses, masonry business, not so much masonry. I mean, anything that's outdoors that you can't do in the winter. They're all competing in plowing and they all just want to cover their overhead and keep their guys employed. So they just keep undercutting everybody and it's getting crazy. So I'm kind of looking at some alternatives. The guy that I just hired, Tyler, he's been amazing. He's an arborist and that's something that you can do year round. So I, I'm going to start advertising for tree work and hopefully get some, uh, get some tree work this winter. And I'm also going to look at, um, there's some contracts out there for lot clearing and pouring slabs. So I'm gonna try and get into that. Hopefully pick up a few contracts, but right now we have a decent, we have 35 residential, maybe more. Those are decently priced, but that's only when it snows. So we're doing some pivoting, some shifting. I'm gonna see what contracts we can get, see if we can get some money for it, see if we can get into trees and doing this other work because I'm in the same boat. I have to keep my guys working, but I'm not gonna do it if I'm losing money or if it's just, I'd rather get into another service than uh, just underbid to stay busy. So tomorrow's Friday. I'm going to be doing some work with Keenan. We're going to be tying up some loose ends. And hopefully I can send out and set up some advertising for tree work and other stuff as well. All right. Today is Friday. Keenan and I are here finishing up set point. Everything's looking pretty darn good. 
I just have to get up on two rows of scaffolding and finish trimming what they couldn't reach with this guy. Everything else came out really good. Keenan is going to be doing some finishing touches on this guy. And then we have a little bit more to trim on the front of this guy over here. Next thing is finishing up two other hedges. And uh, I'm going to try and get done early today so that way I can work on getting some advertisements out there for tree work and possibly some more hedges and also any more advertising that I can do. Um, that is a sharp looking hedge, baby. And uh, any more advertisements that I can do to get work this year and maybe some more plowing and some finishing touches on my app so that way I can have some more transparency with the guys and they can clock in, set, uh, look at the budgeted hours for the job, all that sorts of stuff. up here not gonna lie I am a ways up hedges look great though real good okay so we just finished up one other hedge that we had to touch up on and now we are finishing up this last hedge if you can see it we already came in and trimmed the majority of it, but um, on the other side there, there was a little bit that we had missed, so we have to come back and get that trimmed up. Um, it's a beautiful cemetery, massive hedge. This hedge extends all the way down. It juts out over there, if you can see, and then even further down. It's, it's a big one, both sides, tops. Um, yeah, it's a big hedge. I finished up yesterday with all of the loose ends and then at the end of the day I ended up working on um, some contracts and uh, I've been working on my app. So I've been running into some issues tracking um, hours and uh, because I haven't been using timesheets for mowing we use timesheets but for the work orders we haven't been using timesheets, so I've been tracking on my phone and I've been having the guys track it on their phone, but it's just been, uh, it's easy for things to get messed up and it's not the most efficient way to do it. So I've been working on this app. I have a system pretty much laid out, but it just needs some final tuning. What I do is I have a, a lead tracking app that any inbound customers it comes into, and it's a CRM, so it tracks all of my customer relations, but I use that. And then um, I have a work orders app and I'm just bridging the two right now. So having a smooth transition from when an inbound lead comes in, we collect their information, create an estimate for them, and then have that estimate get created into a work order. So this is a test customer that I'm working on. Um, this action here creates the work order. Uh, so this might make more sense. So this is the lead. Um, we get the customer's name and each client's profile can have many leads. So that pretty much just means if a customer calls in and um, uh, they have they call for different jobs or whatever, they get created as a lead. So one customer profile can have many leads and then each lead can actually have many uh, work orders, which is kind of what I'm working on now. So down here you can see the reference estimates and then reference work orders. This is just a test one. Um, so you enter uh, what it is that they're looking for, a description, and this is just, this is an estimate, so. Um, but the information that we input here, you click create work order, and that ends up going over to here. And this work order, um, this is connected with another app. So this is what the the my guys would log in and see um, and they have all the customers names along with the budget number of hours and the schedule when we're going to do them. So I'm just getting that. So I'm just creating that smooth transition from taking them from our CRM 
and turning them into a work order. I'm gonna be working on that this weekend and then I just have to go and drop off some contracts for plowing. And um, yeah, that's my weekend. Okay, so I made a lot, I just took a shower so my face is a little red. I just made a lot of progress on the app. Feels like some days that I work on the app, I don't get anywhere. And then other days it's like things are just going. Um, so I just spent like six or seven hours working on it, but I actually made a lot of progress. So for the work orders now, um, when I create them, I can create them right from our CRM. So under the customer profile, they, um, Lisa gets a phone call and she enters the job interest. So we have a list of services that we offer, whether it's a fall cleanup, a spring cleanup, mulching, uh, tree trimming, hedge trimming, blah, 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 blah. So she gets a phone call, she enters all of those. And then I go in, she'll usually schedule me for an estimate. I'll show up, I'll do an estimate. In case it's something I can do on Google Earth, I can really quickly go to the lead profile, I create an estimate, and then I can create, um, or what I do is I, I create separate line items for each of those services. And then I give a price, uh, I enter what it's gonna cost in labor and uh, materials or other expenses. And then what that does is each line item I can export as a work order um, in case, say somebody wants a patio done and they want their gutters cleaned. We're not always gonna show up on the same day to do that. So I wanna create two separate work orders. If it's a fall cleanup and gutter cleaning, um, I have the option to make one work order for all the services in that lead. So like I said, if it's a fall cleanup and gutter cleaning, we might just do those all at the same time. So we'll export that as one work order and it takes the information from the estimate. So whatever the labor cost is, that's how I determine my payout for performance pay. And that gives the budgeted hours for uh, the crew to look at and know, okay, we have four hours to complete this job um, in order to be on budget. It's hyper efficient. So I create the estimate and then Lisa gets back in touch with the customer. If they approve it, she can go through and create the work orders and then she schedules the work orders. So now she has a budgeted number of hours for the work orders. So I'm really excited about this because this is going to make things very efficient. I still have a lot of other things to work on. Um, <laughs> there's a lot in my brain, so I've just been jotting it down. Uh, but this is the time of year where I get to work on that stuff. So super excited about that. I just got an um, email from somebody that we submitted a snow proposal to that I kind of forgot about. Um, so I'm going to be meeting with him this week and there's a pretty good potential we're going to get that. So we're looking pretty good on snow. I got to work on advertising to get some tree jobs and I'm going to reach out to a company that does lot clearing. And um, if we can get all of that rolling, that's going to be awesome. That way I can get the guys schedule full for the winter. I'll pretty much only work if we need plowing. I don't have the garbage run anymore. So I can use the winter as my time to work on everything that I need to, um, which there's a lot of stuff that I need to do this winter. Uh, I wanna get my uh, CPA, not for accounting, uh, for pesticide use. Certified pesticide applicator is the title. That way in the spring, I can actually have the guys go do the weed control um, in fertilizing without me having to be there. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna learn a design software for patios and landscaping. Uh, this way we can get into more of those higher end paver jobs. And also uh, if I can create a blueprint, then the guys can show up to the job and they know exactly where to dig, how many pavers they need. Um, it's gonna streamline that quite a bit. And then the final thing, not the final thing, but one of the big things is I wanna work on a customer portal for uh, customers to be able to log in and select services that they want. The last big thing is um, advertising. So I know uh, the paper in this area, the Press Republican, they do a deal um, like Christmas or New Year's time where they give you a really good deal for the year um, to place an ad in there for the whole year. And um, so I wanna do that. I wanna create direct mail letters. I wanna update the website and get all of our ads rolling because next year, my goal is to double again. We've doubled every year. So the goal is to keep doing that. And in order to do that, we really need to hammer the advertising and I really need to have my systems in place. And the systems are really uh, 
coming into play. So just tying it all together and um, yeah, super exciting. I'm, uh, I'm a little burnt out on computer work for today, but um, made definitely some great progress. So I'm gonna keep at it and things are looking good. This week was kind of rough, but things are looking good now. So yeah.